All right, so functional groups. Uh, these are what actually make hydrocarbons interesting. Um, without functional groups, basically you have exciting things like wax and um, oil. So really they don't do a whole lot unless you have some sort of functional group on them. Um, functional groups fall into three basic categories. So we have the three basic categories here. Um, we have carbon-carbon multiple bonds, which really doesn't seem like it should be a functional group, but the extra electrons in the double bonds and triple bonds um, are good reaction sites. And we'll uh, explore these more later when we're discussing reactions. Um, carbon bonded to a more electronegative element. Um, typically, it's going to be um, oxygen or nitrogen and sulfur for or like organic compounds, so compounds that come um, from living organisms. Um, the uh, attachment of halogens is a little bit more um, synthetic, so that's mostly from man-made chemistry. Um, and then carbon actually double bonded to um, oxygen. Um, the reason it has its own category is that these behave differently than carbon bonded to a single oxygen. Again, we have a, it's a good site for reactions. Um, anytime you have lots of electrons in an area, in an organic molecule, so either with the double and triple bonds in um, just carbon carbons, or the carbon double bonded to an oxygen, you've got uh, a good reaction site that are used. Um, categories two and three are polar molecules, so more electronegative elements, obviously that's going to be a polar molecule, um, and then oxygen is a more electronegative element, so there's no surprise that that's also a polar molecule. Now, um, categories two and three, if we've got polar molecules, we're going to have an increase in intermolecular forces. And the result of this is going to be an increase in melting point and boiling point uh, when compared to um, element or excuse me compounds of similar size. And the fact that it's compared to compounds with uh, similar size is an important point because uh, sometimes people overemphasize the um, strength of things like hydrogen bonds. Um, but lots of London forces can be actually stronger than an individual hydrogen bond. So something like wax, um, I am fairly certain, has only carbon and hydrogen, so, and it's saturated, so it won't have any double or triple bonds in it. And that's a solid when something, uh, something like uh, methanol, um, which is much smaller but has a hydrogen bond um, on the OH, uh, is a liquid at the same temperature. Um, the other fact that I need to get in here, but I've done a poor job of managing my space, is that they have increased melting points and boiling points, and they also have an increased solubility in water. Um, water is a polar compound, and like dissolves like. So any increase in electronegativity will increase the solubility of that compound in water. So things like um, methanol or ethanol will dissolve in water. Um, ethane and methane do not dissolve in water very well. Uh, the organic compounds that we're going to look at or organic families that we're going to look at in the course are listed here. Um, we'll talk more about those in future classes. Uh, the naming of halogenated hydrocarbons we've already gone over. Um, I'll just give you a second to quickly jot down your names for these two and see how you do. So just pause your playback for a moment and see how you do here. So we have chloromethane and 2-chloropentane. Um, the additional uh, halogen names are up above there. So you have chloro, bromo, fluoro, and my personal favorite, iodo. Um, also, please remember that the halogens come first in the name, regardless of alkyl groups or other um, substituents. Now, aromatic hydrocarbons is almost a separate section. So, aromatic hydrocarbons are a very, very special branch of hydrocarbons. So, aromatic hydrocarbons are compounds or hydrocarbons that contain benzene. Uh, benzene is really a very special molecule um, for a number of reasons. 
Okay, so the two main reasons that they're special is that the bond length um, is somewhere between an alkane or an alkene. So it's not quite an alkane length, um, which is a little bit longer than the alkene length. And the reactivity is similar to alkanes. Now, we know that benzene, because of its structure, which is um, C6H6, it has to have um, three double bonds. So it's strange that its behavior is actually closer to alkanes than it is to alkenes. And the reason that it is, um, or reacts in such a way, has to do with this sort of circle that you see here. So you see the circle in the middle? Now it's theorized, or it's believed, that the um, double bonds actually are shared. So the three double bonds are shared equally by all six carbon atoms. And what you get instead of just two sets of double bonds, or three, excuse me, three double bonds, you get a delocalized electron ring, which you can see in that picture there, and also down here. So the other way that these are sometimes drawn is like this, which I understand looks like basically the same thing flipped, um, but scientists were able to like radioactively label some of the carbons, and they were able to determine that the electrons actually act as a delocalized electron ring, um, or a pi bond, which is something you'll see in the future when you discuss these things. Now, because they are not alkanes and not alkenes, they have their own naming rules. So the naming rules, there's actually two sets. So if there's three or less carbons attached to the benzene ring, the benzene is the parent chain. So in the cases where three or less carbon chains are attached, benzene is our parent. And everything else are our branches. So the names will be... So I have a benzene ring here. So notice that I don't have the circle drawn in the middle, but anytime you see a six carbon ring with uh, three double bonds, you've got benzene. So you can write benzene. And I have an ethyl group sitting off of it. So I have ethyl benzene. Um, in the second example here, again, I've got a six carbon ring with three double bonds. So I have a benzene. Now my benzene has an ethyl group and a methyl group coming off of it. Now I think this is probably the first time you've seen the skeleton structures. On a skeleton structure, any end or corner represents a carbon. So that's my methyl here, and these two carbons here represent the ethyl. Now the numbering, we're going to use the same numbering conventions. So we'll list these alphabetically. And because it's not going to make a difference and we have a cyclic structure, we're going to give the ethyl group the lower number. So we have one ethyl, two methyl, which it clearly says there, benzene. And that's how you would name it if it's three or less carbons attached to our benzene ring. Now, if it ends, oh, excuse me, let me just talk about orthometapara. So there is other designations instead of using the numbers. So because it's understood that you can put the lower number with the thing that comes first in the alphabet. Um, so let's pretend for a second here that instead of this being CH2, um, I'm going to pretend that this is going to be CH2, CH3, and do the same down here. So I'm actually going to have ethyls and methyls attached to my um, chain for my benzene ring. Now um, we can use letter designations. So ortha is going to be creatively an O, meta, M, P for para. So one, two was going to be O, ethyl, methyl, benzene because my alkyl groups are located at 1 and 2. The next one will be essentially the same thing, except that it's going to be M, ethyl methyl.
And the last one here is going to be para, so P. It just sort of saves you writing a little bit of numbers and dashes. So something to be aware of. Either system is right. So I could have also named this 1-ethyl-2-methylbenzene or 1-3 or 1-4, but it's just quicker. Now, in the case where benzene is attached to three or more carbons, um, the rules change up a bit. So this is similar to where we, if we have things that are of equal length, we pick the one with more branches. Um, after we get to a carbon chain longer than three, it becomes easier to treat the benzene ring as your branch. And its branch name is not benzyl, like you think it might be, but phenyl. So as a branch, we call benzene uh, phenyl. And this is because there are lots of names for organic compounds that have been kicking around for longer than there's been naming systems. So you'll find lots of things that are sort of like, I don't know, like leftover from a long time ago. So phenyl is an example. Um, things like acetic acid instead of ethanoic acid are going to be examples that we're going to be dealing with. So there's a lot of older names that kick around in, in organic chemistry. So in this case here, we have, we get a skeleton structure. So we have one, two, three, four, four carbons. So that's a butane, no, no double bonds. And off of our butane carbon number two, because it's either going to be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, um, we've got a phenyl group. So two phenyl butane. So that's that.